way. It is through the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross. That's the only way. Okay. Papaliwanag ko po sa inyo kung anong nangyari more than 2,000 years ago when Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary. Paano niya tinanggal yung sumpa na dulot ng ating pagsuway sa salita ng Diyos? And this message will explain in simple practical terms how we may follow God's way from curse to blessing. The entire message of the gospel <clears throat> revolves around one unique historical event, and that is the sacrificial death of Jesus on the cross. Yan po ang mabuting balita. <clears throat> Kaya nga po, bakit maraming mga tao ang ayaw tumanggap sa mabuting balita ni Kristo? There's only one reason. They are blinded. The fallen son has caused the people to be blinded. Just sabi ni Paul, the God of this world ay binulag ang mga tao kaya hindi nila makita ang liwanag ng salita ng Panginoon. Because there is nobody in the right man, mind na pwedeng to, na reject ang offer ng Diyos na salvation. Wala. Walang pwedeng tumanggi dyan. And the reason why kaya lang sila tumatanggi is because they are blinded. And that is our role. We need to evict the God of this world na bumubulag sa kanila. Because these people are also victims. Biktima lang din sila. Even though they are responsible to their actions, but at the end, they are also victims of these fallen sons of God. Now, sabi ng Hebrews 10.14, By one offering or by one sacrifice, Jesus has perfected forever those who are being sanctified. And the only way we can be sanctified is only by the offering or the sacrifice that Jesus did on the cross of Calvary. There are two powerful expressions na ginamit sa salitang ito, sa verse na ito. Perfected and forever. Okay, anong ibig sabihin nito? Na yung daw ginawa ng Panginoon, nagpapakita na every need of the entire race ay tinugunan na ng Panginoon. And the effect of this is extended throughout time and unto eternity. Okay, once and for all. Oh, Philippians 4.19, sinabi ng Diyos, And my God shall supply all your need according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus. That all your need includes the release you are seeking from the curse. Kahit yung mga unbeliever, yung mga tao, gusto nilang mapalaya sa sumpa, alam nyo ba yan? Hindi lang nila ma-express at masabi kung papaano. Okay? Wala namang tao na mag ang magugusto anuman ang kanyang reliyon na siya ay nasa ilalim ng sumpa. Ayaw niya yun. So God has not provided many different solutions for the innumerable problems of mankind. There is only one. There is only one solution sa ginawa ng Panginoon. He offers us one all-sufficient solution which is answer to every problem. So lahat ng problema ng human race ay nasold by this one sacrifice and offering of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is the cross of Jesus Christ. Okay? I say, three like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. So, yun ang kasalanan ng tao. We have turned our back from our God. We have turned everyone to his own way. Yun po ang sinasabi ng Panginoon. Yun ang ating major sin. Kaya yung mga picture na pinakita ko sa inyo, isa lang yung sa pagpapakita na 
we have turned our back from the Lord. Okay? So, yung kasalanan na yan, ay parehas lang din yan ng anumang kasalanan na ginagawa ng maraming tao ngayon. Okay? Hinighlight ko lang kasi nag-celebrate sila ng Valentine nung, na, nung nakaraang itong week na ito. Di ba? So, what is the basic or universal problem of all humanity? We have turned each of us to our own way. Yun yung tinatawag na universal problem. Tumalikod tayo sa Diyos. Because you cannot separate from God. Why? He is your creator. The Hebrew word that sum up this turning our back, turning our own way is abun. Okay? Abun is translated as iniquity. And the closest equivalent of this word sa English ay rebellion. Rebellion not against man, but against God. Okay? And no one English word, whether it is iniquity or rebellion, conveys the full meaning of Avon. Kasi po, itong sa Bible po, Avon describes not merely iniquity, but also the punishment or the evil consequences that iniquity brings. So, yun ang ibig sabihin ng abon. Hindi lang siya iniquity or rebellion kung hindi kasama yung ano, punishment. In Genesis 4.13, makikita natin ito, sabi ni Cain kay Abel, pagkatapos siyang patayin, my punishment is greater than I can bear. The word punishment there is, in Hebrew is abon. Okay? And, Not merely Cain's iniquity ang din describe ng salitang Avon, but also the punishment it brought upon him. Binabanggit din niya sa Leviticus 16.22, The goat shall bear in itself all their iniquities to an inhabited land. During uh, Yom Kippur, once a year, they offered two goats, one to Yahweh, okay, they made a burnt offerings, and the other goat, the priest would transfer the sin of the people in the camp doon sa goat. At yung goat, pinapakawala nila sa wilderness papunta kay Azazel. Azazel is a fallen son. It's a, it's a rebellious son. Okay? Sons. Son of God. Okay? These are equivalent to Satan or The one who rebelled against God. So, the goat bore not merely the iniquities of the Israelites, but also the consequences of their iniquities. So, yun yung uh, ceremony na ginagawa nila. Inililipat doon sa goat yung kasalanan ng mga tao at pinapakawalan ito palabas sa camp. Because remember, the camp is a holy ground. And that camp, only God reigns. There is no demons on that place. That's why every year they have to cleanse the space. Okay? So, yun ang kanilang ginagawa. So, in Lamentation chapter 4, Abon occurs twice with the same meaning. Iniquity and punishment. So, the single word Abon is translated by a complete phrase. The punishment of iniquity. In Isaiah 53 verse 9, sabi niya, He had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Referring to Jesus Christ, this is a messianic uh, scripture, okay? And in verse 6, sabi niya, The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. All of our iniquity and the punishment, the consequences of that iniquity was laid upon the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not merely was Jesus identified with our iniquity. Ano nangyari? He also endured 
all the evil consequences of that iniquity. Remember when Jesus was in the garden in Gethsemane and praying three times with the same prayer. Na sabi niya, if it is your will that the cup of suffering will pass from my hands, not your will but your will. Di ba? Parang sinasabi niya, Father, is there any way that I can redeem man without passing on this, uh, without doing this thing? That all the evil consequences of their iniquity will be laid upon me. I think the Father said, no other way. That is the only way. So like the scapegoat in the Day of Atonement, what I'm telling you, He carried them away so that they may not never return again upon us. Ganun yung ginawa nung ginagawa nila sa goat. Pinapalabas nila doon sa camp para yung kasalanan na yun ay hindi na bumalik sa kanila. Or what? Or even the consequences of those sins that iniquity that they have committed ay hindi na sila maapektuhan. So here is the true meaning and the purpose of the cross. Yan ang meaning nung pagkamantay ni Cristo doon sa krus sa Kalbaryo. Jesus endured in our place all the evil consequences that were due to divine justice to our iniquity. Remember, God is a just God. Tandaan niyo po yan. He cannot overlook sin. So none of us has ever done anything to, ser- to deserve such an offer. That's why sinabi nga, it's all by grace. All of us, di ba, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is what? Death. And none of us can ever do anything to earn it. Wala kahit pasunugin mo ang katawan mo at i-offer mo sa Diyos. It can never do anything to earn that salvation or gift that binibigay sa atin ng Panginoon. Ang tawag dyan, divine exchange. The evil came upon Jesus that the corresponding good might be offered to us. That is divine exchange. And the first aspect of divine exchange is on a spiritual plane. Okay? Unahin natin. What the first aspect of divine exchange is on the spiritual plane. And what is that? Jesus received the punishment due to our transgression and iniquities that we in turn might be forgiven. So, yan yung unang nangyari. Nakatanggap tayo ng kapatawaran dahil tinanggap ng Diyos ang lahat ng parusa sa ating mga kasalanan. Romans 5.1 Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. That's what happened. And the second aspect of divine exchange, exchange is on the physical plane. And what is that one? Jesus bore our sickness and pains that we, that we through His wounds might be healed. Sa pamagitan ng... Uh, latay na kanyang tinanggap sa kanyang physical na katawan. Ang sabi ng Panginoon, ang lahat ng ating karamdaman ay kanyang dinala at binigyan niya tayo ng ano? Kagalingan. Isaiah 53:4 and 5. Surely he has borne our grief, literally sickness, and carried our sorrow that is pain. Yet we esteem him stricken Tim is smitten by God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement or the punishment for our peace was upon him. And by his stripe or the wounds that he had received on the cross, we are healed. So that is the second divine exchange. He received all this g- grief, griefs and carried our sorrow. The exchange is, we receive the healing on our physical body. That's why when we pray for healing on our physical body, we don't beg God. 
Why? Kasama yan sa iyong tinanggap na kaligtasan. Kasama yan sa regalo ng Panginoon. You don't need to beg. You just need to claim. Di ba? Kung baga sa loto, tumama ka na. Ang kailangan mo lang gawin, pumunta ka sa opisina nila at kunin mo yung napaladunan mo. Hindi mo kinakalang tumaya at hoping na tatama ka. No. You already won. You just claim the prize. But the only way you can claim it is only by faith. God requires what we call believing loyalty. You need to believe Him. Okay? And Matthew 8, tingnan nyo ang sabi ng Matthew. That evening they brought to Him many who were oppressed by demons. And He cast out the Spirit with a word and healed all who were sick. At sabi ni Matthew, this was to fulfill what was spoken by the prophet Isaiah. He took our illness and bore our diseases. Hindi pa namamatay si Kristo yan. Di ba? Na-prove na niya na yung sinabi ni Propeta Isias ay totoo. So, the twofold exchange described in the above verses is this. Number one, Jesus was punished that we might be forgiven. Second, Jesus was wounded that we might be healed. So that is the first two divine exchange that happens in the cross of Calvary. The third aspect of the exchange is in Isaiah 53 verse 10. And sabi ron, Yet it was the will of the Lord to crush him. He has put him to grip when his soul makes an offering for guilt. So, we need to understand this in the light of the Mosiak ordinances. Kasi there are various forms of sin offering in the Bible. And the person who had sinned was required to bring his sacrificial offering. It's either a sheep, a goat, or a bull, or some other animal to the priest. And then, ang gagawin ng tao na yon, he would confess his sin over the offering. And the priest would symbolically transfer the sin that he had confessed from the person to the animal. And then, the animal would be killed, paying the penalty for the sin that had been transferred to it. On the cross, the sin of the whole world was transferred to the soul of Jesus. Yan yung sinasabi sa Isaiah 53. Sinasabiron, he poured out his soul unto death. 2 Corinthians 5.21 For he had made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, that we may become the righteousness of God. So it's about God's own righteousness, a righteousness that has never known sin. Okay? Ito yung nangyari sa atin. It is not we receive from the Lord, not our own righteousness, but God's righteousness. Itong righteousness na ito, it's as high above our own righteousness as heaven is above the earth. Okay? Ito lang yung righteousness na pwedeng tanggapin ng Diyos para ikaw makalapit sa Kanya. And in this righteousness can only be received solely by faith. Okay? So, itong pangatlong aspeto ng divine exchange, ibig sabihin ay ganito. Jesus was made sin with our sinfulness that we might become righteous with this righteousness. Okay? All the sin of humanity was imputed upon the Lord Jesus Christ, upon His soul. Okay? Jesus becomes sin. That will become His righteousness. Next, the fourth aspect of divine exchange. So, yung una, our sin has been forgiven. He bore our sickness that we might have healing. 
di ba? By His stripe we were healed. Pangatlo, all the sin of humanity was put upon Jesus that we might receive the righteousness of God. Number four, the fourth aspect of divine exchange, sabi ng Ezekiel 18 verse 4, the Lord state, the soul who sin shall die. Okay? Maliwanag ang sinasabi ng Panginoon na yung kaluluwang magkakasala ay ano, ang parusa ay ano, kamatayan. Sabi ng just the wages of sin is death. It's not only spiritual death or separation from God, it is also kasama yung physical death. In James 1.15, sabi ron, sin when it is full grown brings forth death. Okay? So when Jesus became identified with our sin, it was expected that he, sh that he should also experience death. That is the outcome of sin, di ba? He died for three days and three nights. He was in hell. Oh. Hebrews 2.9 Jesus was made a little lower than the angels. Ibig sabihin, he became human. For the suffering of death because a spirit being, an angel or an Elohim, cannot die physically. That's why he was, kaya siya nagkatawang tao. So that he can die physically. That he, by the grace of God, might taste death for everyone. Okay? In return, to all who accept his substitutionary sacrifice, Jesus now offers the gift of eternal life. Divine exchange, substitution. Instead na tayong mamatay, siya ang namatay. Di ba? But in Romans 6.23 said, For the wages or the reward of sin is death. But an earned gift, an earned gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So the fourth aspect of the divine exchange may, sum, may be summed up as follows. Ito po yon. Jesus died our death that we may share his life. Sabi ng Romans chapter 7, when Jesus Christ died, we died also. When He rose from the dead, we rose with Him from the dead. That's why when you were ba water baptized, it symbolically, you died to sin. And when you rose from the water, you are now a new creation in Christ Jesus. So yung pang-apat aspeto ng divine exchange is what? Jesus died our death that we might share his life. Because the law says, the wages of sin is death. So, hindi pwedeng i-overlook ni Lord ang consequence ng kasalanan. Because God is a just God. Tandaan po natin, He is a just God. Hindi po pwede na i-overlook niya yun. Next, the fifth aspect of the exchange is from poverty to riches. Anong sabi ng Panginoon? 2 Corinthians 8, 9 For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, though He was rich, yet for our sake He became poor, that you through His poverty might become rich. So, panglimang aspeto of the divine exchange is tayo na siya na, mahi, na mayaman, naging mahirap para tayo ay umaman. Question, when did Jesus became, become poor? Kailan siya naging mahirap? Some people picture him as a poor throughout his earthly ministry, but this is not accurate. Yung iba, ang tingin nila, nung si Christ daw ay nasa lupa, si Jesus ay mahirap. No, he's not poor. Actually, he was rich. I'll prove it to you. He himself did not carry a lot of cash. Walang ATM machine noon eh. Tama? Hindi siya nag-decarry ng cash. But at no time, he lacked anything he needed. Kailanman, hindi siya nagkulang.
I'll show you. Remember in Luke 22:35, di ba? Pinapunta niya yung mga disciple and they lack nothing. Everything has been provided for. And uh, in John 12:4 to 8, he and his disciple made a regular practice of giving to the poor. Hmm. Ano pa? Jesus' methods of obtaining money were sometimes unconventional. Alam niyo ba yun? Kailangan niya magbayad ng tax. Anong ginawa niya? Sabi niya, mamingwit ka doon, Peter. Yung unang isda na, na mauhuli mo, tinan mo sa loob noon, maraming coins. Di ba? Money has, has same value, whether withdrawn from a bank or from the mouth of a fish. Kaya today, the same thing din. Kahit wala kang bank account, you can withdraw. Remember in Matthew 14, di ba? A man who can provide substantial meal for 5,000 men, plus women and children. Oh. It will prove that Jesus is not poor man. Di ba? He's not a poor one. Throughout his earthly ministry, Jesus exactly demonstrated actually abundance. Very abundant yung ministry niya. Oh, wala nga lang siya dalang cash. Pero anytime he need the money, he can produce. Di ba? He always had all that he needed to do the will of God in his own life. Ganun din tayo dapat ngayong panahon. He was continually giving out to others and his supply was never exhausted. So when, so when did Jesus become poor for our sake? Kailan siya naging mahirap para sa atin? The answer is on the cross. He became poor when he was in the cross. Sabi ng Deuteronomy 28.48 28.48 Therefore you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send you against in hunger, in thirst, in nakedness, in lacking everything and he will put a yoke of iron on your neck until he He has destroyed you. This is the situation, the consequences of the sin of the people of Israel. The curse. This is the curse that he said to the people of Israel. That, he, that they will be in hunger and thirst, in nakedness, and lacking everything. When Jesus was in a cross, he was hungry. He had not eaten for nearly 24 hours. He was thirsty. Ano pa? And he was naked. Oh. And after his death, he was buried in a borrowed robe, in a borrowed tomb. Hmm. Jesus became poor when he was on the cross. Jesus exactly and completely endured absolute poverty for our sake. Tandaan niyo po. So naging mahirap ang Panginoon na siya nasa cross. 2 Corinthians 9.8 And sabi ron, And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that you always saving all sufficiency and all things may have an abundance for every good work. That's the positive side of the divine exchange. Di ba? We experience abundance now because of what the Lord Jesus Christ on the cross of Calvary Don't believe that you are poor. You are a rich person because of what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. The only basis for this exchange is only God's grace. Hindi sa ating mga kakayahan. Di ba sabi niya, I have given you the power to create wealth. It's the Lord that will give you the power to create wealth. He did not give us the wealth, but He gave us the power to create wealth. Oh. It can never be earned, tandaan nyo. It can only be received by faith. Our abundance will be like that of Jesus while He was on earth. Yung abundance na sinasabi dito ng Panginoon ay katulad nung si Kristo ay nasa lupa. We shall not carry a large amount of cash or have a large deposit in bank. Hindi ka magkakaroon ng maraming pera dyan na dala-dala mo na or an ATM card na you can swipe. 
to any store and you can buy anything. But from day to day, we shall have enough for our own needs and something for the needs of others. Kaya nga tayo binibless, alam nyo ba yun? Para sa ibang tao. That's the very reason. Kaya may sobra ka, may surplus ka. Not only for you, but for others. That is how Jesus lived here on earth. Acts 20.35, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Si Jesus mismo nagsabi. He provide us therefore with enough to cover our own needs and also to give to others. Kaya pag may nagsobra dyan sa mga needs mo, tanong mo si Lord kan kung sino ang gusto niyang i-bless mo. So the pip aspect of the exchange may be summed up like this. Jesus became poor with our poverty that we may become rich with His riches. Napakagandang, bal napakagandang balita po ito para sa ating lahat. Hindi na natin kinakailangan pang maghirap, sabi ng Panginoon. You are rich. Tandaan niyo po. Next, the sixth exchange at the cross covers also the emotional forms of suffering. From man's iniquity. May consequences po kasi yung iniquity. Tama? And there are two major emotional consequences na pwedeng maranasan ng tao. The two of the cruelest wound brought upon us by our iniquity are shame and rejection. Ito po yung pinakamabigat na dalaan ng iniquity or avon na ating nakumit. Laban sa Diyos. Shame and rejection. Both of these came upon Jesus on the cross. Shame and rejection, naranasan ng ating Panginoon sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Because shame can come from a acute embarrassment to a sense of unworthiness that cuts a person off from a meaningful, fe meaningful fellowship with either with God or with man. Maliit lang siya. An acute embarrassment. Di ba? At itong embarrassment na ito, nagdudulit ito ng shame. And all of us, because of our, we turn our back unto the Lord, all of us experience this shame. Okay? And one of the common causes is the sexual abuse or molestation in childhood. Alam niyo ba, karamihan na nagiging bakla or tumboy, Karamihan sa kanila, they experience sexual abuse or molestation during their childhood. And it brings shame to them. And often, this leaves scars that can only be healed by the grace of God. So kahit anong gawin nilang sa sarili nila, hindi na matatanggal ang shame na yan. Hebrews 12.2 Looking to Jesus, the founder, the perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, see, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus, while, even, while on the cross, He experienced that shame. That is our shame. Dinala niya doon. Because execution on the cross was the most shameful of all forms of death. Kasi ang pinapako sa cross ay yung kriminal. Huhubaran ka pa. Can you imagine that? And dying on the cross is reserved for the lowest class of criminal. Jesus was, they made Jesus a criminal. A sinless one. Naging criminal. This was the degree of shame Jesus endured as He hung on the cross. Oh, can you imagine? Yung shame na meron tayo, anumang klaseng shame yan. In Hebrews 2.10, sabi ng for it was fitting for Him in bringing many sons to glory 
to make the capital of their salvation and that is Jesus perfect through suffering. Oh, our salvation was perfected through the suffering that Jesus suffered on the cross. And the first thing that he suffered is shame. Okay. And there is another wound that is open even more agonizing than shame. That is rejection. Usually this comes from some form of broken relationship. Kadalasan yung ating rejection nagmumula sa sinapupunan pa natin. Marami dyan ang mga bata pa lang sila is gusto na silang i-abort ng kanilang mga parents. It caused by parents who reject their own children. Or the rejection may be in harsh or negative ways. Or it may be merely a failure to show love and acceptance. Yung iba literally nire-reject nila yung bata. Ayaw nilang tanggapin na anak nila. Okay? Or, dahil lang sa, like for example, mahal din nila anak nila, o nag-abroad, that is a failure to show love and acceptance kuminsan. Di ba? Marami ang mga anak na nagre-rebelde in spite na maganda ang buhay nila dahil lang trabaho ang mga magulang nila sa abroad. And they keep blaming their parents for they are not there kung kailan sila kailangan nila. Kung kailan, kung kailan nila kailangan ng mga magulang nila. Absentee parents. Okay? And most of this rejection ay dala ito ng ating mga wounded that was created by our parents. Okay? If a pregnant woman entertains negative feelings toward the infant in her womb, surely the baby will be rejected when she came out or when he came out. Ganun din po yan. Hanggang lumaki yan, rejected ang bata na yan. Until the love of the father would come upon the child and heal the wounds na pinag-create nitong rejection na ito. And the breakup of marriage is another frequent cause of rejections. Sa mga bata. Di ba? When the parents broke up, nag-divorce, o na-annul yung marriage nila, it also caused rejection. And God's provision for healing, the wound of rejection, is recorded in Matthew 27, which describes the culmination of the agony of Jesus. Anong sabi ron? And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabaktani, that is my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. Tignan niyo po ito. Jesus is crying to the Father, why have you forsaken me? For the first time in the ministry, in the history of the universe, the Son of God called out to his Father and received no response. When Jesus was here on earth, every time his prayer is answered by the Father. But when it comes in the death, in the cross of Calvary, the Father, Jesus received no response from the Father. Jesus identified with, one, with man's iniquity. That the uncompromising holiness of God caused him to reject his own son. He cannot even look at his own son because of the sin that was placed upon him. Nakuha niyo po. Akala niyo ba kayo lang na-reject ng father? Jesus Christ, the son of God, was rejected by his own father when he was in the cross because of us. Jesus endured rejection in its most agonizing form. You know, that <laughs> the most agonizing form of rejection is to be rejected by a father. All of us, one way or another, experience this kind of rejection from our parents. Kaya kung minsan may mga ugali ka na lumalabas ang bakit ganyan ka. Some of us are insecure because of that rejection that we have experienced. 
And God is telling us today, the only way is the Lord Jesus Christ. The only way for you to be healed is by the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Almost immediately after he died, alam nyo ba yun? Almost after that, that he was rejected by the Father, he died. He died not because of the wounds of the crucifixion. He died of a broken heart. Kaya yung broken heart na yan, nakamamatay yan. Kaya mag-ingat kayo. Psalm 69 to 20, ang sabi ron, reproach has broken my heart. Matthew 27, 5, 1. 51, I mean. Then behold, the veil of the temple was torn in two, two from top to bottom. The, most, the moment Jesus died on the cross, he gave up his spirit. The veil that separated the holy place and the holy of holies was open, was, was torn from top to bottom. The rejection of Jesus had opened the way for us to be accepted by God as his children. Ito po yung nangyari. We were accepted by God as his children. That's the good news. John 1 14 says, But as many as receive him, to them he gave the right to become children of God. Ephesians 1 5 and 6, He being predestined us to adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, God made us accepted in the beloved. That's the good news, mga kapatid. We were accepted and we were re healed from any form of rejection. The rejection of Jesus resulted in our acceptance as sons and daughters of God. Look out to look today. How many Filipinos today are experiencing rejection and shame? The picture that I've shown to you is a proof of rejection, mga kapatid. It's manifesting. And the two emotional aspects of the exchange at the cross may be summarized as follows. Number one, Jesus bore our shame that we might share his glory. Second, Jesus endured a rejection that we might have his acceptance as children of God. That's why God is raising many sons to glory. God is not raising leaders. He is raising sons. Because I do believe sonship is discipleship. We are not only raising disciples, disciples. What we are raising are sons of God. Who are aligned to the Father. You cannot walk as a son if you don't know the Father. Matthew eleven twenty seven. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and to whom the Son will reveal. So, in other words, you cannot just know the Father by just reading the Bible, or by just hearing a sermon about the Father. It should be revealed to you by Jesus. You need to receive a revelation in your spirit that you are a son. Because look, that's so. Look at the prayers of the people today, of the of the people of God. Most of those prayers are prayers of an orphan, not prayer of sons. I give you an example. Yung bang mga anak nyo lagi nagpipray o lagi nang hihi isa yon ng pagkain araw-araw. No. Why they don't ask you for food every day and all their all the needs that they need every day because they knew that they have a father and they knew that their father will provide everything they need that's why they do they did they don't need to ask but why is it in the church today what you can hear is all people are begging god it seems like 
God is not a father to them. Di ba? The principle of divine exchange is this. The evil came upon Jesus that the good might be offered to us. That is the divine exchange. Galatians 3.13-14 Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Having become a curse for us, for it is written, Curse is everyone who hangs on a tree. That the blessing of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ Jesus, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Some people will question us why we are claiming the promise of God in the Bible that is solely uh, promised by God to the Jews. Because when we got born again, we become spiritual Israel. And the blessing of Abraham belongs also to us, Gentiles who believe in Christ Jesus. And the promise of the that we're going to receive this inheritance for us can only be received through faith. Para nang palataya doon sa ginawa ni Kristo sa krus ng Kalbaryo. So Jesus became a curse that we might receive a blessing. That's the summary. Jesus became a curse that we might receive a blessing. That's why yung sabi ng Diyos sa Ephesians chapter 2. 1 verse 3 Let me read this one Sabi niya Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places even as He chose us in Him before the foundations of the world. Imagine that. He has chosen us even before the foundations of the world. Bago niya nilika ang mundo, He already chosen us to be blessed with every spiritual blessing. So 1 Peter chapter 2, with every spiritual blessing pertaining to life and godliness. Anything that you need, you are already blessed. It includes every one of the curses listed by Moses in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Lahat ng curses doon, napalaya na tayo. So, ano ibig mong sabihin na, eh kung na yung napalaya na, eh bakit may mga curses pa rin tayo nararanasan? It means, sabi ng Bible, a curse cannot alight without a cause. God always honor and respect our will. If you want to live a life that is, if you want to turn your back from God, hindi ka niya pwedeng pigilan. You can do it because remember, we are corruptible. Ang tao ay pwedeng magkamali. Willfully or not, Pwede niyang gawin yun. Nakuha niyo po. That is the good thing of the freedom that God gave us. We were created in the image and the likeness of God. And we are free to do whatever we want. Hmm. That's why the choice is yours. That's why in Deuteronomy 27, Deuteronomy 27, sabi niya, in the last verses there, sabi niya, I'll give you a choice. Ito yung mangyayari sa inyo. If you disobey, God, this is what's going to happen. If you obey God, this is what is going to happen to you. It's up to you now. Hmm. Kaya may mga curses pa ang naranasan ng tao because of the wrong choices that we made. Conclusion. It is finished. Ang sabi ng Bible, All debt has been paid. Yan ang ibig sabihin nung it is finished. Lahat ng utang na bayaran na. 
The Greek text phrase is only one word in Greek. It is a perfect tense of a verb that means to make something complete or perfect. In English, it could be rendered, it is completely complete or it is perfectly, perfectly perfect. So Jesus had taken upon himself every evil consequence that rebellion had brought upon humanity. Inako na ni Cristo ang lahat ng consequence, lahat ng avon, iniquity and punishment ng rebellion ng tao sa Diyos. Binayaran na niya. Kaya wala ng utang ang tao. All this that we in turn might receive every blessing due to His obedience. Dahil sa pagsunod ni Cristo, we receive now the blessing that He has promised us. Question, have you been able to accept with faith this account of the sacrifice of Jesus and of all that He has obtained for you? Kailan mo lang tanggapin ang regalo ng Panginoon? But as many as received Him, to them He gave the right to become children of God. Religion cannot save you. Even your own good works cannot save you. There is only one way. You have to believe what Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary, and you have to receive it and accept it by faith. If you're living under the shadow of a curse, have you begun to see that Jesus had made full provision of your release? Nakita mo na ba na pinayaran na ni Kristo ang lahat para ikaw ay makalaya? Kailangan mo lang paniwalaan. Di ba last week I talk about the seven manifestation of a curse? And if you are in that kind of situation right now, you can change it by believing what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. There is a full provision for your release. Meron ang ibinigay sa iyo ng Diyos para ikaw ma-release sa curse na yan. Like the picture that I've shown you, shown you before. These people are under curse. Kawawa naman sila. And the only way that they can be released is when they see the light of the glory of God. And they are being deceived and blinded by the God of this world. And our work and our assignment, mga kapatid, is to evict that strong man in our country. That's the only way. There's no other way. Sabi ng Bible, how can you ransack a house? You cannot ransack a house unless you bind a strong man first. There was a strong man in the Philippines na siya yung nag mamando, nagkukuman ko anong gusto niya mangyari. And remember, the devil came to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Oh, but Jesus Christ came to give life and make it more abundantly. But until we evicted this strong man, ruling in these nations, patuloy po yung mga ganyan na makikita natin sa ating sosyodan, sa ating society. At lalala pa yan mga kapatid. Diba? They are pushing, diba? The, this kind of bill na gusto nilang ipasok. Maging legal ang kanilang pagsasama. Diba? Same-sex marriage. Why they're doing it? It is the work of the devil, mga kapatid. If so, there is one immediate response that you need to make. Ano yung gagawin mo? It is to say thank you. Do the right now. Say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for all that you have done for me. I do not fully understand, but I do believe, and I am grateful for what you have done on the cross of Calvary. Mare, hindi nyo pa maintindihan ang lalim nung, or yung implication ng ginawa ng Panginoon yung kanyang pagkamatay sa yung kanyang pagkamatay sa krus ng kalbaryo you just believe it by faith say thank you to him right now now keep on thanking him in your own words come on just keep thanking him lord salamat po dahil sa yung pagkamatay sa krus ng kalbaryo ako ay napalaya na napatawad ang aking kasalanan 
my eternal security is my eternal destiny is secured now because of what you have done on the cross of Calvary. And you have provided me healing for my physical body because by your stripe I'm healed, Lord. The more you thank Him, the more you will believe what He has done for you, mga kapatid. And the more you believe, the more you will want to thank Him. Alam niyo ba yun? Giving thanks actually is the first step to release. You want to be released from any curse, just thank the Lord for what He has done. There was a divine exchange that happens more than 2,000 years ago. Conclusion. Remember, Jesus was punished that we might be forgiven. The second one of the divine exchange is Jesus was wounded that we might be healed. So kung tayo man may karamdaman ngayon, remember what the Lord Jesus Christ did on the cross of Calvary. You don't, you don't need to beg God for healing because when you receive Him as your Lord and Savior, when you got born again, Kasama po yan sa package na yung tinanggap. Healing of your physical body. Thirdly, Jesus made sin with our sinfulness that we might become righteous with His righteousness. The only righteousness that the God the Father in heaven received is the righteousness of Jesus. It was imputed upon us. That's why when you pray, you enter the realm of the Spirit. That's why sabi ng, Bi ng Biblia in in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20 and 21, that you are seated with Christ in the heavenly realm. The very reason you can sit with Him in the heavenly realm is because of the righteousness of God that you have received. Jesus died, Panglima, that our death, Jesus died our death that we might see, that we might share His life. Dapat tayo mamatay, because that is the wages of sin, is death. God cannot overlook the consequence of sin. Diba? Number six. Papan lima. Jesus became poor with our poverty that we might become rich with His riches. Mga kapatid, pinalaya na po tayo sa kahirapan. Kahit pasabihin natin ang Pilipinas ay naghihirap, mga kapatid. Wala kang maraming cash sa bangko. Mga kapatid, ang Diyos natin ay mayaman. Nung si Jesus ay nasa lupa, wala siya daladalang ATM card. Wala siyang daladalang cash. But he can withdraw money kung kailan niya kailangan. Di ba? Nag-withdraw nga siya sa isda eh. Oo. Oh. Jesus bore our shame that we might share His glory. Mga kapatid, if we experience this kind of shame, may mga karanasan tayo na pangit. Sabi ng Panginoon, He already bore that shame for us. Jesus endured our rejection that we might have His acceptance as children of God. The greatest rejection that a human being can experience is the rejection from a father. And we are not alone. Jesus was rejected by his own father in heaven when he became sin for us. He cannot even look at Jesus during that time. That's why Jesus said, why have you forsaken me? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That is the very reason why. Three times nag-pray si Jesus doon sa Gethsemane. Lord, kung pwede, mabago yung paraan. Is there any other way that I can redeem man? Hindi ako kinakalang mamatay, ma mahiwalay sa iyo. That is the painful thing to be rejected by his own father. Lahat tayo nakaranas niyan. At ang sabi ni Lord, I provided solution for that rejection. 
Jesus became a curse that we might receive a blessing. Yan ang sinabi ng Panginoon. He became a curse that we might receive a blessing. Mga kapatid, let us thank the Lord right now. Pasalamatan natin ang Panginoon sa Kanyang ginawa sa ating buhay. Because God is so good. And there's only one way para tayo makalaya sa sumpa. Ito yung ginawa ng ating Panginoon doon sa krus ng Kalbari. Father, we thank you today. Remind us of what you have done in the cross of Calvary every day. Okay, every time we, you, told, uh, you told us, Lord, that we have to do the communion every now and then. Kasi sabi nyo, the, uh, as often as we can, because we remember what you have done on the cross. Music